Raven's heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. Shh! Calm down. No, I'm a copper. We're on the same side. A copper? What are you doing here? And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off! He's gonna steal the eye. But... how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest! Disturbing a Swiss officer while he reads a crime novel is a very serious offense. I could arrest you. 
but I have a pistol, and you don't. And why do you need a gun? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns, nor do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre, and those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was, although I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? From Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. But my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. You do know these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, surely I can be of assistance somehow. I saw a safe being loaded. We have everything under control. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> That would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner, if you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're guarding something. Oh really? And what might it be? I really couldn't say. But it must be very important. Why is that? Because you are very important. They wouldn't have assigned the case to you if it were just a trifle. <laughs> Let's assume that we really are transporting something very important on this train. And let's assume that it really is my job to see that it arrives safely. Then why isn't the train crawling with police? It's... it's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, that is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along fine without you. You won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You're in my country. And I've been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do. Whether you like it or not. Hmm. Clever. And stop. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zana. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? <sighs> oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? 
I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa, it was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change. This morning, I thought I wouldn't be hungry because of all the excitement. Thankfully, I bought a sandwich with me anyway. sandwich paper. That way I can carry it without making a mess of my trouser pocket. Still, I'd prefer not to have to carry them all day. came with a croissant I bought at the train station. A guilty pleasure. I don't need that either. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. table has it Vicarage in the Mirror, a detective novel by my favorite author, Lady Clarissa Westmacott. For years now, I've been trying to convince my theater group to stage one of her plays.
violinist is a good-looking fellow. And he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. But one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. I'm not mistaken, you're a violinist. That's true. A wonderful instrument. The violin music touches the soul. That's why I learned to play it. Do you play in an orchestra? No, orchestras aren't really part of my world. A solo violinist. The best soloists travel a great deal and make a pile of money, or so they say. In that case, I'm probably not one of the best. Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at the reception in the Egyptian museum there. I'm sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is that cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. Have a good trip. Thank you. The violinist is a good looking, but one can only hope. There could be many my money's on it. We Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr... Lucian. Professor Edgar Lucian. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago. No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. Ah. Uh, you don't know him? And you also... No! Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. 
just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have. Although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time. But you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present. And especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just... I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But... I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then closed the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At the very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen! When did you... When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich, on the platform! James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything. Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. If I might ask you a few questions about your fellow passengers. I thought he was looking for my purse. James, tell him to look for my purse. The Baroness wishes that you search for her purse. But... Couldn't we, perhaps? All right. First, the purse. I... I will have a look around. Thank you, sir. I don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible.
possible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partout is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No, we are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I traveled to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young, but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. Did you notice anyone else? What about the doctor or the baroness? I notice that you've asked me about everyone, except for the inspector who went in the direction of the freight car a few minutes ago. Isn't that the Frenchman? who made his name when he caught the raven. I wouldn't quite say caught. Well, shot. Why don't you ask me about him and my theory about what he's doing here? I don't think we should discuss Inspector Legrand's investigation in public. Legrand, right, that was his name. Will he save the day again? Or will you, Constable? There's something else. A passenger's purse has gone missing. I suppose you haven't seen it. I'm sorry, Constable Zellner. As you know, I only deal with murder, not burglary. Have you asked my boy yet? Maddie is good at finding things. I'll go and do that now. As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seem so... Uh, eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent. But she does I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt. And a difficult bus, from what they say. Mrs. M yes? The little boy, Matt, 
he's your son? Oh, yes. Has he done something? No, no. I've already met him. Clever little fellow. We always call him Professor because he's so precocious. If only someone could just drive the mischief out of him. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my work. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. You have to tell me if that's not all right with you. Good lord, child. Knit as much as you want. So, nothing out of the ordinary? No, Constable. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. Stuart must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Mmm, butterscotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. Hmm, maybe if I just suck it. Who would have thought that one day butterscotch would remind me of my age and of all the things I had to leave behind? I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard-to-open packages. These days nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup in small bags. I couldn't believe it. I'll leave the scissors here. If I need them, I know where to find them. pad on which the steward writes orders. Empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. Locked. Hmm. Where could he be? A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become in the last 10 years. Anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No. Just routine. Constable Zellner, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. 
Le Grand, if you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. It must have been people were well it seems I'm afraid that's you mad you can you're in <laughs> here you Dankeschön. There's something do you know hmm. I told him he's pro if we don't well he is not here I meant to the Baron about this train have you seen unfortunate do you know well I like so I read that she must be a Wiedersehen. Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye. I made the... I'd be... I'd better... I'd better... I'd better... Glass Luna's drop. <laughs> mm, a story about the up an incredible feat. They build the largest movie set of all and because of the main actress's many illnesses, several changes of dirt the most expensive movie ever made. John Surtees won the Formula One World Championship for the first time on Saturday. He also won the World Championship in motorcycle racing from 1956 to 1960, making him the only man in motorsports to win World Championships in both motorcycle and Formula One events. Hmm. Not really my cup of tea. Too loud, too fast, too... 